Hey everybody, Ron Burke here with Dan Hay from Ubisoft Montreal to talk a little bit about Far Cry 5. So if you would introduce yourself and kind of give us some, uh, some insight on the game. Sure, uh, I'm the creative director on Far Cry 5. I've been with the brand for I think like five games now, four or five games now. And when you think about Far Cry 5, if, if you don't know much about the brand or if you've never um, played a Far Cry, the thing about this is that we're going to America, right? Far Cry typically in the past has taken you to these uh, exotic locations. Sure. This time we wanted to bring you to the States and we wanted to give you an experience where a cult had taken over this fictitious place in the States in Montana, Hope County, Montana, and basically had taken it over and they're a doomsday cult and they believe that the end of times is coming and that they want to save you whether you want to be saved or not. So one of the things that I've noticed playing the game so far is that, uh, so I was stationed in Great Falls, Montana for a while, okay. so it definitely captures big sky country. You guys are definitely pushing the envelope cool. with, uh, with graphics. Uh, the intro section, which we can't unfortunately show you yet, uh, just really blew me away. I mean, cool. you guys have really taken that vocab to the next level, so I want to just commend you on that. Awesome. But uh, one of the things that I noticed in the game is that you guys have really captured kind of the, the, the true believer aspect of what it's like to be in Montana and kind of have that cult mentality. What kind of research did you guys do to, to build that world? I think, you know, when you think about world building, you think about something like that you've been to Montana, you know Montana, yeah. we, we knew we had to go there, right? Yeah. And I think that in previous games, sometimes you're going so fast, you don't have the time to do that kind of research. This time we wanted to do it right. So we said, let's make sure we go to Montana. Let's make sure we meet the people. Let's make sure we get a sense of, of what it's like to talk to somebody to look at the sky, to drink the water, to just get a sense of what it's like to live there. And I think that it really helped because the thing that I got from, from being in Montana is that people there have a really good bullshit factor. Yes. Right? And they, you can't go to them and just, and when you're talking to them, you really get an understanding of they're looking at you going, are you telling me the truth or not? They're real people. Right, exactly. And then, and it's, and it's one of the things that helped inform how we write and how we even make it so that the AI and the people that you meet in the space, they feel real. There's little things, little moments like, if you go up to talk to somebody and get intel in Far Cry 5, and then about halfway through that you walk away, they're going to get a little pissed off. They're going to get a little it's bit bothered, right? Exactly. And they're going to say, when you come back, they're going to go, okay, really? Can I, can I continue? And you're like, okay. And it, it's, it's little, but it's big. Yeah, yeah. Um, so talk about some of the gameplay mechanics that you guys have changed. Sure. I know there's like fishing, yeah. and obviously there's lots of vehicles and stuff like yep. that, but uh, other than not having but the one tower that I'm aware of, okay. uh, what, what are some of the other gameplay mechanics well, you guys are introducing? Uh, I think around? we tried to do this time was make it so that the game is entirely organic. And I think that when we did that, we said we wanted everything to be about player choice, right? You step out into the world, you can play the game any way you want. So once you've left Dutch's space, once you go back out into the world, if you choose to go to John's or Jacob's or another region, you have the ability to walk through there, go there, snack on it, leave. And when you go to talk to people, that's when you're going to get intel. That's the stuff where you're going to learn about the world, and they don't know everything. People in the world aren't omnipotent. They don't have right. all the information. They've got a little bit of information based off of the gossip that they've heard, and they suggest, you know, you go over there, or maybe there's a guns for hire you can get, or maybe there's a person that's missing. And all the way through that, we're providing you with all these little moments where you can get in a plane, you can meet a bear named okay. Cheeseburger, or you could, I, uh, cheeseburger. Perfect. Awesome. you could get Boomer, there's guns for hire you could pick up, but the game has to react. As devs, we don't know moment to moment if you're going to be playing in co-op, have one guns for hire, two, whether or not it's going to be a bear, whether or not it's going to be a dog, there's a lot of different things that can happen, and so the whole idea is lean into that. Let a story unravel as the player wants to do it, let people play the way they want, let them have the loadout they want and have the experience they want, so it's about freedom, choice, and opportunity. So you guys are uh, leaning into the cooperative more. Uh, the whole game is playable cooperative, yes. right? Yep. And is that drop in, drop out? Basically what we want to be able to do is that... You're going to be playing the game, and if you want to have somebody jump in, they can. You're going to load back into a section to be able to go and start to play. But we basically want to make it so that it's the whole for hire system. We wanted to make the system where you've got friends for hire, you've got guns for hire, you've got fangs for hire, and you have these people that you can bring with you, so it feels like you're kind of building a smaller. Yeah, I think up to four of them, right? Is that right? You've got the ability to have your co op partner yeah. and two guns for hire, provided that you've gone all the way through, and you can swap those out for fangs for hire if you want. Awesome. So uh, one of the other things that I noticed uh, while I was playing is that you guys have, it seems like you guys have retooled the, the driving mechanics. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you can actually look behind you when you back up. Yep. That's awesome. I've never yep. seen that in the game, so thank you for doing that. Cool. But um, can you talk to me a little bit about how you rebalance weapons, or I'm sorry, rebalance uh, vehicles? Sure. Well, I think, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty simple thing to say that you want it to feel authentic. Yep. But, you know, if you're going to the States, 
everybody knows what it's like to get inside of a classic American muscle car, turn on the tunes, and it just yep. feels right. And so we wanted to be able to make it so that if you get into a muscle car, you feel like those tires are slick, you feel like you're you're driving there's it. Weight yeah, it. there's real it's heft. When you go around a corner, it doesn't feel like a super modern car, but at the same time, you've got a host of different vehicles. Maybe you want to get into a big rig, mm -hmm. and we've got a couple of big ones in the game that happen to have machine guns loaded on them, but you have the ability to smash through stuff, and you feel the heft and the weight, that the speed feels right, that the game just feels right in terms of playing the way you, because as soon as you get into a vehicle and it doesn't feel right, you just know it. It's hard to describe, but you know it, so we worked hard on that. Um, I have to say that I am completely irresponsible when it comes to the flamethrower. Okay. Uh, uh, I've killed my co-op partner more times than I can Okay, <laughs> um, that's all right. What are some of the other weapons that, uh, that people can expect? Well, uh, I think, you know, the thing that we're really bringing to the game is that when you think about weapons, it's not just weapons, it's opportunities, right? So when in the past, you know, we've had the gyrocopter in the game, but this time we right. want to give you planes. And we can give you the ability to bomb, we give you the ability to fly a helicopter, we can give you a grapple that can hook onto the helicopter, so you can do that with your co-op partner. But also thinking about the AI that you can bring with you, the guns for hire as weapons, and letting yeah. you have a roster of people that you can swap out. Maybe you want somebody with an RPG with you, and you're going to be able to go in and be bombastic. Maybe you want somebody like Boomer, who's going to go in and be very, very quiet, very stealthy, and almost be an organic drone. So thinking about all those opportunities to allow your play style to be the way that you want, that's been the real focus for us. So we're looking at the tail end of March, right? For yes, 27. 27. Yep. Uh, anything else you want to add? I think people are going to love it. I think. Uh, it's organic, and, and for the first time, it's really letting the players decide how they're going to author their own story. And we can't wait for people to see it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Cool. Thank you. Cheers.